Good morning, Dell fans, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. We're midway through day two of our three days of coverage here on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by my co-host and laptop fumbler, Dave Vellante. Hey, 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 how's it, how's it going? <laughs> Steady hands after our no, 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 yeah, right. <laughs> Late night. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we were, we were pretty behaved last night. We were. I, I, for Vegas in particular. Although, I went by the, what used to be, we used to call it the circle bar. Oh yeah, you know, and, yeah, yeah. And of course, Back in, back in the day, EMC world, it was the circle bar, and of course all the former EMC sales guys were there, so I was trying to sneak to my room, but I, I, I couldn't get by them, so it was fun. Yeah, Good hey, little reunion, hey, yeah. It's, 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 it's always worth having a big reunion. Speaking yeah. of reunions, we've got Cube veterans on the show. John Siegel, thank you so much for being here. Pleasure as always. It's, it's a joy, you've got your big smiles, you always bring us a fantastic customer story, yes. and I'm very excited for a Cube first timer, I believe. Second. Second time, oh, second repeat visitor, sorry. First time with me then, we'll, yeah. we'll cut that in. Rich Kenyon, thank you so much for being here. Happy to. Uh, you have a very unique role. We don't always get to have government pros on the show with us. Tell us a little bit about your role at the city of Amarillo, just to get us started. Sure, so I'm the assistant city manager and CIO, responsible for all technology in our city. Casual, just Casual. all the technology within yeah. with, within a municipality. Some pretty exciting stuff. So John, talk to me. I know you were really excited to bring Rich on. What's going on here? What's the partnership? Look, I mean, it, about a year ago, actually, we started working together, uh, Dell uh, in the city of Amarillo, and, uh, and Rich will share, but it, it is, he has got a transformative vision um, for how to take technology and apply it to good, right? And, and so what you're going to see here is, uh, and I'll let him talk more about it, but. It, it's really about um, making life better for the citizens of his of his uh, of his city, um, and not only that, but he's also advocating to do the same, and we're now working with him to do the same and make it more repeatable for other cities around the country. Right. Right. That, so, how did you end up meeting each other? Did you reach out to Dell? Yeah. What, is, what does did, this look like if I'm a city and I want to partner with a power player like sure, Dell? Sure. So it, it started actually after our broadband project. We had about half of our city that was missing. This makes uh, sense. Right. So we yeah. closed that gap. And in doing that, what, what I discovered honestly about my own city is we have more refugees per capita than any city in Texas. Twenty-four percent of our residents don't speak English at home. We have one middle school speaking sixty-two languages and dialects in the same school. So oh my gosh. I, I'm a nerd. I started with hugging You're face. Safe here. Yeah, You're yeah. amongst nerds. Started playing with <laughs> models and I was really impressed with the abilities uh, to translate and thought, hey, this there's something here. Um, reached out to Dell and said, hey, I have this crazy idea. What if we use generative AI on our website and made that an interface into services? So instead of having to know English or typing, you could just have a conversation and get access to information and municipal services. That is so important. We talk a lot, you know, and we joke about it a little bit. There's a lot of buzz around democratizing AI and what that really means. And I think there's a lot of a lot of lip service in that space a little bit sometimes. But the real practical application is how is it going to how does it democratize access to even resources and tools and information, right. which is exactly what you're doing. You have a demo for us, don't you? I did. I could show you. <laughs> Would you mind pulling that up? We'd Not love to all. see it. So this is actually our, our website in, in development right now. It's, it'll go live in October. And it is a digital human that resides on our website that allows residents to connect to the website. She'll come up and ask, you know, what services you need access to. We do it in text for those that are, that are hearing challenged. And then you just ask a question. So how do I pay my water bill? And then she will tell you how to do that and then navigate you to the site, uh, to the place to pay your water bill. And this is Emma. This is Emma. Now, how'd you come up with the name? I, the, you know, uh, CrowdStrike has Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, IBM in the 60s had a thing called Eliza, which was like the original AI chatbot. How'd you come up with I mean, Emma? I mean, Watson. To be, yeah. to be transparent, it was the result of a dad joke. We were looking at the names and <laughs> Emma was one of them. And I said, well, if she's Emma, her last name has to be Rillo. And everybody laughed. We were like, okay, that's a thing. So oh, it's get Emma it. Rillo. Wow, that is yeah. just. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Two daughters. Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that was great. How old are your daughters? 30. I have three grandchildren now, so they're grown. Awesome. What do, yeah. what do your grandchildren or your children think of Emma? They adore her. Like, <laughs> yes. What a yeah, lovely they, thing they to had, say about an AI. They, they, they actually do. And it was really funny when, when we first started testing her, um, my head of innovation, Kristen, showed her kids and her daughter said, you know, that's the sixth grade teacher everybody wants to have. And I knew we were into gold, right? That's the response that we wanted. This is interesting, you, you, your reaction. Because I mentioned Eliza. Yeah. 
uh, Eliza, in this, in, literally in the 60s, I think it was late 60s, they would put Eliza in front of folks that they felt had depression. Because, right. yeah, and, and so. It, Companionship. It, yes, and so yeah. you think about yeah. AI, it's much better than sitting on a phone and you know, a call uh, yeah. center, right? So Actually, you know, that's something that we're, we're having to deal with. So when we did our initial testing, um, what we discovered with our senior population is exactly that. Our initial testers, they won't stop talking to her. So I came back and you know, two and a half later, hours later, they're talking about their grandchildren. It's, so instead of fighting that, we're trying to embrace that and work with some of the nonprofits and actually work with our, uh, our seniors community so that we could, we could have a community companion, if you will, that addresses senior issues. It's a weird dynamic. Do you, when you use ChatGPT, do you, don't you, do you say please and thank you? I, I do. I, I do. I, I do sometimes. Like just in, to. just in case the machines come like after us. So, but it, <laughs> Emma Lou is one of the versions, right? So right. did you tell Emma Lou is a is a another version, if you will, iteration of Emma for the senior community. Yeah, so we're working with nonprofit profits to figure out, okay, how do we fund a companion for our seniors and let the seniors define, you know, what issues do they want to talk about, what personality will she have? And I think in the long run, oh gosh, that's we're, so gonna, we're gonna start to see that. We're gonna see it with our homeless community, we'll see it in education. So we're really making a study, we call it conversational city. We're doing a study around what does is, what is generative AI for good look like in a city in a community and kind of in society at large. How do we use that to make impact? How, I'm, I'm, so, I'm real glad we're having this conversation. This is a great one. What, when you're communicating with your, you know, we, we all live in a tech bubble. We're talking to fellow nerds all the time. We all have our great opinions and, and right. hopes and dreams for this new technological revolution. How are the citizens of the city of Amarillo embracing this? What's the response been like as you do some of this user feedback? You know, it's been really interesting. In the beginning, you know, anytime you innovate, whether that's in a corporate setting, you, you have to create a, play, a safe space, right, to innovate in. When you're in government, that safe space has to extend out to your residents. So we really didn't hide from that. We hit that on the front end. We passed what we call our digital dignity rights and privacy agenda. So it's a framework by which we can ingest new technology and protect the rights and privacy of our residents. We're very transparent. So we wanted to address the fear on the front end. That's been incredibly helpful. And now that they've, there's a, a level of comfort that okay, the city's doing the right things, and I can see that, uh, now they've, they've, they've embraced the technology and it's really fun actually to introduce her to different groups. Because until you see her, you know, it's just a concept. But it, you know, I have, I have employees that tell me that she's her, you know, their favorite coworker. So the vision here is to bridge that communications gap. That's it. Amongst the citizens. But what's that, this obviously wasn't eight years in development. I mean, just very rapid yeah. uh, time to development, time to market. What's the tech underneath this whole thing? So a lot of it, so first of all, this is a collaboration between Dell and NVIDIA and some of our third, third party partners as well, and a part of our open ecosystem. In fact, this is a, a great example of the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA in action, really, more than anything else, right? We've been talking a lot about the factory. Um, you know, and, and underneath it, if you will, is, is Dell infrastructure, right? So you can imagine uh, whether it's our, our servers and our storage, uh, but also working with NVIDIA around their AI enterprise software um, and their infrastructure as well. Uh, and frankly, a lot of this is also our services. I mean, this is, it w was really critical here in, in the early going and frankly still ongoing basis is helping the community figure out what are the right data sources, how to integrate those data sources into the model, picking the model, picking the use cases, um, implementing the platform, integrating it with some other third party software that we're using and in addition to NVIDIA uh, and Dell uh, to create that AI avatar interface uh, that's so unique and so conversational and really I think what's changing the game here. So, you know, underneath the covers, to your point, is, is Dell and NVIDIA infrastructure as well as some software. But what we're really doing from a Dell perspective is providing that, what the AI factory is, is that easy button, right? So, uh, that's what everybody wants these That's what days. they want. Yeah. So, but yeah, under the covers, look, there's a lot of complexity, where, you know, for sure. Um, but we're hoping that we're providing that great simplifier that allows them to turn all their great data, train it, optimize it, and create these outcomes that Richard's talking about. And it's, a, it's about. a rag? Are you like vectorizing the, yes, the, exactly. the data? Yes, exactly. And, and the, the vector database is, is a well-known vector database or an open source or is it 
a, a, an integrated? It, um, it is, it's actually, it's, it's actually Prion that's providing the vector database services for us. Um, we made the decision early, you know, you've got to think about where your data sources are. Um, yes. We actually, all of her, her data comes from our website, which has been really interesting to me because it's forced us to relook at the way we, we inter interface with our residents, period. So it didn't take very long for departments to realize, hey, we don't do this very well. Like, it doesn't facilitate a conversation. And if it doesn't facilitate a conversation for Emma, it's clearly not answering the questions that our residents really right. have. So we've gone department by department and revamped our entire website. You could just bolt a digital human on your existing website, it won't work. You won't have, you'll have garbage conversations. So department by department, we've engaged with our residents and asked, what do you want to know about water? What do you want to know about finance? And we've defined those conversations, that builds the website, and now as we learn more, we just update the website that gets ingested uh, into, into the vector database and we use RAG and that keeps us updated. The, if you notice on the demo, there's a thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh -huh. We actually track those, we track every conversation. Now we're anonymized, I don't know who's having it. But I can see if it was good or bad, I can tell if Emma could or couldn't answer it. And now we have SLAs for our directors, so they see, okay, here's questions we need to get answered in the next 48 hours. So the conversation improves every day as we go forward. Yeah, I'm sure, uh, we saw this with our Cube AI, we had way more thumbs downs in the early days. You know? And you have to respond to them, and you have to you know, continue to iterate. Uh, are you using um, multiple LLMs? Are you playing around with them? What are you finding yeah. there? Well, the website's just our first use case. Right. I have like sure. a two year roadmap, right? Um, and for that is, that is one LLM, but we're building a new city hall. When you walk in, Emma will greet you in the front door and tell you where to go. That can be a much smaller language model. So the, the persona will be the same, cool. but the use cases will, you know, will, de will define what LLM that we use. What, yeah. ha so she's obviously a, a humanoid looking robot, or a digital human. Right. How did you decide on her form factor? That was like nine weeks worth of, worth of research. Uh, you know, we worked with Unique who actually built her. We had our internal call, call center staff actually involved, and then we had residents involved and we went through iteration after iteration. She'll end up being, Emma is the brand for the city, but our long-term vision is, you know, now with, the, with uh, speech, detect, you know, speech detects, you can actually recognize languages and dialects. We want to get to the point where when you interface with us, Emma can recognize, okay, that may be a Somalian man, and then introduce a different avatar that is culturally appropriate to that person. So ideally, when we're all said and done, no matter who you are, when you interface with our city, you'll speak to someone that looks and feels like you. Seems like a little thing. It's not. But it's a really big thing. It makes people feel like, okay, they, they, they really care about us. And this is running in your data center. It's not right now. Right now, so we took kind of an old school approach. We're developing in the cloud. Ah. I did not want to wait, right? Uh, now, this yeah, gave great. me a okay. year of development while Dell got their, their infrastructure pieces ready and now we'll migrate it on site. Okay, so why don't you just keep it in the cloud? Why are you going to migrate it back on site? Because of the number of use cases that I've already formed and it's cheaper to move the AI to my data than my data to the and AI. And why is it cheaper? It's just the, 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 what it costs to just run tokens in the cloud? Yeah, and well, and the data sets, right? So we have some use cases where we're working on something now. You know, you think about a conversation that's two-way. Right now, a resident asks a question and Emma gives an answer but we're making some progress on follow-up questions from Emma, so now we can ask a question. Emma could ask, ask a question, and residents could give an answer. So a simple example is we're giving updates for council for the first time this week from Emma. So she'll tell residents, here's what That's happened so in cool. council. Yeah. I can ask, what did you think about that? And now my residents give answers. We're using insight software that typically you see in commercial operations to gather that. Now I have a sentiment engine for my entire city that's updating on every topic. So you can see where that would get expensive as data sets start to grow. And did, did you, how'd you pay for this? Was it, was it incremental budget? Or did you have to steal from other budgets? No, actually, I've been plotting this for a few years, so uh, we had some funds for redeveloping our website, and we sat on those and added to them, and I kept telling our, our communications department we're not spending it yet because this generative AI thing is going to be something. And then when we ran the numbers for expanding our call center, uh, in order to meet the need, we would have to spend about 1.8 million a year in additional salary to have all the languages and translators 
and we're doing it for a fraction of that. So not only did we, we had the money through other, through other projects, but, but it actually saves us in uh, yeah, the- Yeah, it showed the value the, add, the, which, yeah, is, which exactly. is exciting. John, I'm curious, are other cities like this reaching out to you? Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, Rich has been uh, advocating as well, and we've been—he's actually been speaking to other customers uh, with us and our, on our behalf. Uh, there's there's a tremendous amount of interest. So, really, what we announced yesterday it was the Dell Gen AI solution for digital assistants, which actually be in demo right behind us right now. Uh, and um, it really is—we've taken all the learnings that Rich that Rich just shared with you, uh, and we've simplified it and made it a repeatable solution, so that other cities can actually. We'll streamline the process. What, what we did with Rich, as I said, started a year ago, strong partnership. He's as uh, a much a partner as a customer, really, at the end of the day. Uh, but, but we've taken those learnings, and now I think we've really streamlined it, and uh, you know, it's now the ability to, we still need the services component to help customers figure out the data sources and everything else, but we've packaged the solution in such a way where now it's going to be easier to deploy, including on-prem or at the edge, because based on what you know, Rich described, uh, there's a lot of advantage to that, whether it's privacy or security or, or cost. Uh, so we're making that now simpler than ever to deploy on-prem. You've obviously built up an application portfolio over the, the years. As you get experience with technologies like this, how are you thinking about the, the, your portfolio? In other words, what areas of the portfolio do you feel like, hmm, what I was doing there, I can now do differently for one-tenth the cost. All of them. Everything. Everything. We, so, we actually restructured even. We re, we've reorganized around the, the change that's coming. Like, we all see it, this wave of change coming in. And I had two concerns. I was really concerned with our change management process and how we, how we innovate. So, we restructured. I moved communication, innovation, and our PMO into the same office. So, now, we're actually going through our entire application set. I'll give you a, a simple example. Um, illegal dumping was an issue that we really struggled with. We put that in the innovation department. They did, a, they did an engagement with our residents and we found out that we didn't ever solve the problem because it's actually six different problems. You know, we, getting, we engaging with residents, they told us exactly what the problems were. We're doing the same thing with applications. Well, the outcome of that is uh, we now use, we have, we, we use machine learning, we've got dump sites, we've dropped our, our fuel costs by $480,000 this year, and that's trash. That is applying just a little bit of AI in our, in, you know, to, to solid waste, and we're seeing that across every department. So I think fundamentally we're changing the way that we look at how we do business. Oh yeah, budget director must be happy. Yeah. Oh, very. <laughs> well, and you're getting teams out of silos. I mean, I think that's a big that's theme, theme that we hear a lot, and even yeah. within the partner ecosystem that Dell has and everyone else, it used to be this kind of Silicon Valley secret, whisper, 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 we're doing these things or whatever's happening, or this team is fighting for this budget. And I really do feel, we've talked about a lot on the show, that this water level's rising together as we all collaborate to design the future of our lives and our families' lives and, and everything else. All right, gentlemen, last question for you since you're both CUBE veterans and I'm sure we'll have you back. What do you hope to be able to say on this stage with Dave and I next time you're here that you can't say today? that we're having two-way conversations and that Emma has been has been extended beyond the walls of the city and is helping our little Guatemalan children in Pampa learn English. So I, th I think we're going to see her applied more broadly across our community. Love that. We can't wait to celebrate that with you. What about you, John? I hope we have another hundred examples of what Rich just went through. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <How's that? laughs> uh, and look, not just, not just in, uh, in city government and in smart cities as he's really building here, but one of the things we didn't talk about is the same exact capability, this, this uh, digital human capability and interface is useful in several industries. Uh, we're seeing interest not just in the cities, which I mentioned earlier because Rich has been helping, but in retail, such as online, as well as physical stores, actually even more so. Uh, we're getting interest in healthcare to really help bridge the, the, the care teams with the patients, whether it's you know, when, they, when they first visit or when they, when they leave or actually during their, their stay. Um, and so, it, and financial services, another one. So I'm, I also hope that in addition to the hundred of those, we have a hundred of other uh, industries um, you know, examples as well. So this is this has taken off. And again, the, we, we are so grateful to Rich and his collaboration here, and we hope to uh, help to continue to grow his uh, his community as well. 
Well, we look forward to hearing as the story evolves, and we'll have all 100 of those city municipalities up on the stage, one big, right. cozy little happy family there on our go. next Let's podcast. Deal. Yeah, sounds great. Dell Tech World 2025, can't wait to see it. All right. Dave, thanks so much for another fabulous interview. Thank both of you for coming to hang out. This is a real fun one that I think applies to a lot of people. We're making AI real here on theCUBE, folks. And thank you for tuning in from home. We're midway through day two of Dell Tech World here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.